So my internet has been down for the last day and a half, and I seem to be getting a lot more work done because I'm not being distracted by my phone. But my internet's back up, and this came across my screen. Ian, could you please make a video on how you prepare, protect, and store your drawn comb? Thanks, I really enjoy and learn a lot from your videos. Mark. This is my wax control method. Uh, good old man winter. So uh, I searched where you are from, Mark, and you're from Georgia. And it's important to uh, point out that uh, you have to understand the, uh, the area of beekeeping that we're in. Um, up in Canada, we have extreme cold winters. Okay, and that practically kills every stage of wax moth uh, that's, that fly up here throughout the summer. Up into August, the wax moth will catch the wind and it'll come up and infest our equipment. So we'll have August into September that we run into wax moth issue. Uh, and it's generally not a big concern. Uh, what we try to do, we basically have a problem if we have equipment that hasn't been used for that year. We try to keep bees within our equipment, within the boxes, at least once in the year just to help control the wax moth issue. Um, Basically what we do is we just store our equipment away. These are uh, fall the hives that have been called out and we just store our equipment away uh, in the cold. And what is it right now? My phone, phone's going to probably freeze up here pretty soon because it's minus 29. That kills, that controls the wax moth. If there's wax moth that flies up on the wind and starts to infest the equipment um, by the time end of September, October, they're already on the back side of it and they're about to get froze out. So we generally don't have a lot of wax moth issue. Same with small hive beetle. Uh, the small hive beetle hasn't been able to, you know, migrate itself up and basic, basically because of the cold winters we have, uh, doesn't allow the, uh, the beetle to establish, uh, the types of soils, all this kind of stuff. So we get away with old man winter controlling those two pests and that's how we are able to store our equipment. I'm going to show you a way that possibly you might want to consider um, on storing your equipment down in Georgia uh, and what it is is providing the artificial environment of cold just to kill off the larvae and uh, it's what I use uh, especially like this year I'll show you a flashback video here um, but I uh, had some equipment that I couldn't put bees into so it was sitting uh, without use for this full year. The brood equipment uh, it tends to attract the uh, wax moth uh, more than uh, honeycomb just because of the pollen and, and stuff in the comb. But uh, it wasn't used so the wax moth was getting into that equipment started to damage it so what I did is I, I have a reefer trailer and uh, I put the equipment into the reefer and I froze them out. So that's something you might want to consider. Um, I have a storage shed here. This holds a few thousand boxes of uh, comb inside my shed here. And then I have three other trailers that I uh, store comb in also. And one of them is a reefer unit. And that's, that's the unit that I use to store my brood equipment in and just freeze out the uh, moths. Uh, just to control them a little bit. I'll show you what I do. So here's my backyard. My backyard looks like most other beekeepers' backyards. It's full of shit. I have my storage trailers here, and one trailer has a reefer. It comes with a reefer, and it happens to work. So I make use of that, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Throughout the year I have surplus brood comb and the surplus brood comb got st stacked in the honey house, the old honey house and left in the corner. So I made an attempt to um, use as much of it as I can through 
throughout the year doubling up some hives just to keep the wax moth out of it. But I'm at the point now where I don't want to double anything else up and I found wax moth is getting into these bird boxes and making quite a mess. So I called out all the bad webbing burnt those frames and I'm salvaging these boxes for next year. Uh, excuse the condition of the boxes, you know. I'm slowly changing my boxes over and increasing the quality, all that crap. But for the time being, I gotta make use of what I've got here. But uh, so there's comb in here. And I wanna use this next year. I have a feeling I'm gonna, gonna be needing it next year, so I gotta get the wax moth out of it. So, one way to do that is using my reaper. I got her cranked up and there's cold, cold air coming out of there. So I have it set for minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna chill these guys out for a day, freeze them out, and then that should hold the boxes for a little while. So I had my reaper going all last night just to uh, freeze out some brood comb. Let's go take a look. Down to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, and she's cold in here. Take a look. Frozen solid, the little bastards. Ha. It's good. So what I'll do is. Close this up. I'll turn off the reefer. Probably didn't have to run it all night. And it'll just sit. And then that comb will be good for you know quite a while. So I didn't shovel out this doorway to get into the shed just to show you this. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted into the shed is because I'm making my regular monthly round on rodent control. And Keeping a shed full of boxes like this, I got to keep the mice out of here because the mice do a lot of damage, especially through winter. So what I do is I uh, use, I'm just checking my sticky traps. So you notice uh, there's no mice in here, which is good. And what they are, these, these are a little cruel, but they work really well. You buy them at your feed store, and they're just a sticky mat and anything that walks across it gets stuck to it and dies. Um, it's cruel but at the same time uh, it works really effectively and I have a lot of money invested into these boxes. These work very well. So I have these placed throughout uh, my storage trailers, uh, throughout my uh, storage shed here and I just check every all the traps once a month. Uh, through the summertime uh, things are checked a little more regularly, but uh, I don't have any poison or anything set out into these buildings because it's a food grade product here. So uh, Yeah, I set these down Along the edges along the corners along the walls where the rodents are more likely to run and I catch them <laughs> 